Rebuilding a Stuart score engine, part three. Assembling and fitting the eccentric sheaves and straps, packing the piston rod glands, making a pair of cylinder gaskets, and bolting the cylinders to the trunk guides. That sounds quite simple to do, but in actual fact, some of the jobs took quite a while. After oiling all the parts, this was quite a simple job. I replaced the bolts in the ends of the eccentric straps, which locate in grooves on the eccentric sheaves. I checked the tightness of the bolts in the eccentric straps and everything's fine. This is a very common way of mounting eccentric straps to eccentric sheaves. Now it's time to pack the piston rod glands. Although this says graphited yarn on the box, it isn't graphited yarn, it's Teflon coated yarn, which I mostly use these days. Modern graphited yarn isn't so good. The old stuff that I used to use, which I think contained asbestos, was very good indeed, but for obvious reasons I don't use it anymore. Why the red cross at the beginning of this section? This is not a very sensible way to pack the gland, as it's very easy to dismantle the part, so I did just that. Once I removed the crosshead pin, I could pull the entire assembly out of the trunk guide. Sometimes when I'm making these videos, depending on the time of day when I make them and how tired I am, I do make mistakes. And I don't know why I didn't remove the crosshead pin in the first place. I cleaned out the gland housing in the cylinder cover. I fitted the gland packing, adjusted the gland, then all I had to do was fit the cylinder cover to the trunk guide. Very simple. I was very pleased with the result. Everything was moving very freely. Now it's time to fit the first of the two cylinders. Originally the cylinders were fitted upside down on this engine, probably to hide the crack in the steam chest which I've repaired. I forgot to remove the rust from the inside end of the cylinder cover, so I'm doing it here using a needle file. I replaced the cylinder cover on the piston rod, and now it's time to make some gaskets that are not extortionately priced. This is a piece of gasket material. I held the expensive Stuart gasket in place and drew round it. I could have used a cylinder cover though. I need to make two gaskets, so once I'd drawn around the Stuart gasket, I folded the gasket material in half. So now whatever I do to the top part of the gasket material will be duplicated in the lower part. I've found that apart from a custom made punch, a good way to cut out gaskets is to use a scalpel, but I don't like them because the blades can fracture at any time and fly across the room. Instead, I used a large and cumbersome Stanley knife. You can see the blade from it at the top. I freely admit this does not look very neat, but please keep watching, you'll see what I do, which will make it good. I cut out the notch on the inside of the cylinder gasket, which is not really necessary. And for that, I used a pair of scissors and cleaned it up using a small grinder. Then with the same pair of scissors, I cut out the gasket, which also separated the two parts. So now I have two gaskets. I'm using another grinder to clean the hole in the center. This is a really good way to do it. It's very simple to do and takes no time at all. This gasket material tends to fray a little bit around the edges. So before fitting it to the cylinder cover, I'm giving it a bit of a clean on some wet to dry sandpaper. Now I need to drill the holes in the gasket material. I put both of the embryo gaskets in the correct orientation underneath the cylinder cover. Then I drilled the gasket as shown here. Here are the two gaskets ready to fit to the cylinder cover. I haven't forgotten to pack the other gland. I'm doing it in a different way just to show that you don't necessarily have to remove the piston rod to do the job. The sequence was as follows. I oiled the piston rod, wrapped the Teflon coated yarn around the piston rod and pushed it into the hole in the cylinder cover using the point of a screwdriver. Now it's time to fit the first of the cylinders. These are not as easy to fit as you would think. The top nuts are really easy to get at, but the ones underneath are quite well hidden. The first thing to do is to make sure that the cylinders are the right way up, not like they were originally. Because this cladding was once uppermost for many years on this engine, it's discoloured and faded. The good thing is, the engine's cylinders look like new from the top. 
This was an unexpected bonus. The next part of the job wasn't. Fitting these nuts on the lower part of the cylinders is quite difficult to do. Here is a technique that works very well for fitting these little nuts underneath. You have to persuade the nut to be in the right position to spin it onto the stud. Small surgical forceps or a pair of tweezers, or in my case, some extremely long nose pliers, gave me a good solution. Fitting the nuts on the two studs at the top of the cylinder is a very simple job. This one isn't quite so simple. After spinning the nuts onto the studs using a screwdriver point, I tightened them using a small spanner. I then repeated the process at the other side. I think it's a good idea, though, to remember to put the cylinder cover on first. Here's a close-up of me spinning the nut onto the stud with a screwdriver point. This is the easy bit. Getting the nut into the right place is the only part that's difficult. I finished the job by tightening the nuts onto the studs, but not over-tightening them. Even with both of the glands packed with Teflon-coated yarn, it's very easy to turn the crankshaft. The next part of the job is to fit the pistons, and in advance of this, I'm applying plenty of oil to the cylinders. That will be in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.